All right, guys, we're back. I have to make this video because everybody else makes videos saying why you shouldn't use the pager. So I think we need to just go over the facts. One, the pager was developed by the exact same people that developed the low-level stimulus. Two, it doesn't hurt. And if it did startle a dog, who cares? A lot of things startle dogs. You know, a squirrel uh, drops a branch out of a tree, it startles them around here. Noises startle dogs. Things startle. Who cares? Uh, it doesn't hurt. Two constant hurts. It hurts. That's a fact. That's not my opinion. And the reality of it is, if you don't believe me, take a remote collar and strap it on your child's wrist and keep hitting the pager all day. Two. Take a remote collar and put it on your child's arm and keep hitting constant all day. You'll be in jail. You will be in jail. You'll be in jail. You will be in jail. That, all right, but that, I don't want to get off on that tangent. That, but that is a fact. These are the facts. So, you know, in, in the event it did startle, it, who cares? Things startle me too. They're not hurting me. What that needs to say to you is dogs have overt reactions to things. If I don't have... If I have the capability, this is what I want you to think of. This is what I kind of thought of this morning, because today is Tuesday, JC, if you're there. Because dogs do, as a general rule, have overt reactions to things. And if you said, what do you mean? Well, like people, they go on a walk, and then they say, oh, it started barking at other dogs. Fast forward six months. This thing is lunging at the end of the leash, being reactive. You know, the behavior has augmented itself. The reaction to things has become augmented to the point now that it's, it's overreacting to everything. So now I'm thinking to myself, well, if they react to the pager, and if I have them overreact to that, the result might be them going faster because I'm augmenting their reaction response. Dogs are going to react to things. I mean, if you don't, if, if your only thing is being able to try to stop reactions to things, I think this, I just swear to God, I just thought of this this morning. If your only ability with a dog is to stop it from having overt reactions, that's not going to be as good as being the puppet master of overt reactions. If we think of the pager as the trigger point, boom, something's going to happen real fast, and you're making that happen. So it's a trigger point. It's not a correction. It's a, they're just thinking of it wrong. You know, and they're thinking if it gets startled, this is the end of the world. It's not. And, you know, the fact that it's, they can hear it and they can feel it, that alone gives it I understand that now. That was last Tuesday. The fact that they can hear it and feel it gives it an advantage over the constant, which they can only feel. And if you said, well, feel how? Feel in the fact that it's attacking these nerve cells and stuff. So the dog's brain, whether it's on a minor or whatever level, is telling itself our body's being attacked. This is the only conclusion I can come to because this is what these nerve endings are telling me. You know, if you've got a pager, they're saying, I hear a noise, I, you know, I'm all into this. It's, it's, that's what you have to think of it. It's, you're using it to initiate actions, not stop actions. Once you can initiate actions, that's why these dogs, I have such explosive behavior. The reality is they can react to things and once they start reacting to things, you have the ability to make them react more. This is just based on these people walking down the street with their dog that has a minor reaction to another dog. They're pulling on the leash and doing all these things causes it to get worse and worse. Pretty soon this thing, you know, and with you, Sophia, with Wolfie, there's got to be a trigger point that exists far away from you. But choom, but choom, 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 right back in your direction. If there's no trigger point out there, they're drifting out into the world. There's no trigger point to send them back in your direction. So this is all valid science, you guys. That's the reality. The constant hurts. It's awful. And it's, it's very, very prone to making mistakes. The pager doesn't hurt. If it did startle them, who cares? A lot of things startle them. If I get a little cranky old dog, a little biter, like that little scrappy, that little Welsh Terrier, and it gets startled by the pager, I'll tell you what I say. I got you. I got you. 
all that guy in that video, I, I, I don't even want to post this guy's video, but all the guy, he hit the vibration, the dog got startled, and it shot forward a little bit. All he would have had to do right then is say, muffin or whatever, and boom, and that thing would have shot right in his direction. It would have come a trigger point. But they said no and went back to the constant. You couldn't really see it do anything. So, I mean, I think you have to think of it that way. If we have an ability to trigger some kind of reaction response, fast reaction response in a dog, we can build that up to the point, I mean, do you honestly think Varik jumps in the air like that? He used to only jump like one inch. Now two, now he's jumping in the feet. I honestly didn't even realize that he was recoiling down to get back up. But, you know, if you said, well, it looks like a runner coming out of a starter block and sometimes he jumps the gun. Oh, you caught me. <laughs> it's a fine balance, you know. If you've got the trigger point, again, if I've installed a trigger point, boom, boom, boom. It, it, you know, if you said a gun, they know, you know, it's got a hair trigger. It could accidentally fire. Yeah, that's what that Doberman has, a hair trigger. Sure, I can fire the trigger, but it misfires sometimes and he does it on his own. You know, I could go out there right now and he'll be flying through the air. He likes doing that. He likes jumping up in the air. So the fact that I can be a part of that, instead of saying, don't jump, don't jump, I'm going to use a constant to make you stop jumping. I mean, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. You know, I just, I've got to try to not focus on these people anymore. But it's just, the reality of it is they're wrong. They don't, if they would just use it, they would see that it's, a major breakthrough. Jim and Phyllis were right 20 years ago. I called Dobbs yesterday and I told Regina, I said, please. I gave her the whole story. She was howling because they don't like dog trip either. So I was, you know, I was yakking the story up a little bit, but oh yeah, she thought it was hilarious. I went off this guy and, you know, I was always filling out the whole details with all the colorful language. And I said, please beg Phyllis to write a follow-up article to the article from 20 years ago. Please beg her. I don't know if she'll do it. I mean, she's been having some health problems and stuff. And I mean, it's just impossible to get a hold of her. And I could really call and demand to get her on the phone. But I don't want to do that to Phyllis. Because she's out there training the dogs. And for you guys who don't know who Phyllis is, back in the... Uh, it was the 80s. This is the 1980s. She had the Schutzen Three national champion, a dog called Krieger von Kriegerhaus. This was the dog's name. And Schutzen was brand new. These people had to be saying to themselves, this validates our method, you know. And Jim still competes in hunt tests, you know. So, it, you know, they're, they gave a really an amazing gift to the world. The fact that some of it got morphed off in the wrong direction, it's got, they've got to be horrified by that. And I'm sure Regina took my story and condensed it down a little bit. Um, but they understand the flywheel part and all that, too. So you've got to have that. You've got to have a true. If dogs have explosive behavior, and I don't have any ability to trigger that, if I have every ability to trigger that, I'm just going to be on the plus side because I'll be able to trigger it when I want. If I understand dogs can be triggered to move very, very fast by things in the environment. So the fact that the pager is auditory and they can feel it, it just, I share, it just gives me an advantage. And I'm not wrong, you guys. I'm not. You know, and if I didn't step up and start saying all this stuff, these people would still be doing this. Your life is going to get better if you can function with a dog on this level. And it does work. If you said, well, after the, peop after the dog graduated, the only thing they could ever really get it to do was an off-leash recall, I'd say, oh, my God, they could get it to do that? That's unbelievable. You know, if you honestly think they're going to get them to do that without... And if you give them constant, they're not going to use it. I mean, that's the other reality of constant. If you said we give it to our owners and they're super comfortable with, they don't, they won't. And I, you know, if you said, how do you know all this about them, how they don't hit the buttons, right? I got a sound box 15 years ago and figured out I was all wrong. They weren't hitting the button the way I told them to. It was, I was suffering placebo effect. I was watching them work the dog, giving them the remote. And it was all, hi Jay, my biggest fan in India. Thank you for supporting my work. It means everything to me. Um, and I am the underdog here. I know that. I've got basically a bunch of men who are trying to say I'm an idiot because if you said that these people looked, they saw your work and they said, please, you know, come on. 
I see nothing. That's not even possible, you guys. It's not even possible. So, you know, it's, that's, that's how you want to think of the pager. And, you're, you know, you are going into a different realm of training. We're understanding that these, if we can operate this dog in free agency, we're in there. We're in there. We, we, I, any trainer can get a dog and strap a bunch of equipment on it and shut it down. If you don't think that dog is thinking later, and then what people want to do is put a huge demarcation line. You're all through. Now here's free agency. I'm not a part of that. You go do your own thing. And then later, the dog decides, ugh, that's so much more fun than being with them. You know, you've got to make them. It is just psychological manipulation and using tools. And, if you know, if you truly believe constant's a better tool, then go get the work that these people have. You know, that's all I can say to people because if you said five years from now, your work is going to be flat. It's not. Who knows? I'll probably have that Doberman jumping over my head. It'll probably knock me down and, you know, it'll kill me. And they'll say, well, they realized her training wasn't good. It was too much. <laughs> they jumped too much. And she killed her. I'd be happy, honestly. If I die tomorrow, I feel like I've made every effort. I'm nobody. Because I'm some girl that trains dogs. I'm not some, you know, that was able to figure out with the help of people to get to this point. That's all. That's who I am. I'm a girl that lives on a farm out in the country in a bunch around in a like redneck part of Florida. Jim Crow is alive and well in the South. I can assure you, I honestly think my neighbors are flying a Confederate flag. I do. I think I saw it over there. I'm going to go look later. You know, so that's who I am. I, and if you said, well, we can't do, oh, yeah, you can do exactly what I'm doing and you can get the exact same results. And if you said, why? Because technical training affords you that luxury. It affords you that luxury. And if you said, what other luxuries does tech afford you? The ability to make friends in other countries and talk to them freely. Freely. Freely and for free. It used to be, I grew up in the time where they used to charge you like, oh, a dollar or something, even more, three, four, five dollars a minute, just talk long distance on the phone. They just were crippling you from making any friends or doing anything. You were technically crippled. So the pager is giving you the ability to duplicate my results. You know, and if you don't want those results, then go with those people. And if you cannot see by now, they're doing it wrong. You know, that's what I told Mike. You know, if they honestly look at that work, uh, you guys, hang on. That was the school. Dave's dog is across the street at the school. Barking. Hang on. I, I gotta go. Thank God I'd be ranting on forever. Dave's dog goes over there to the school and it just stands right out in the road. So I gotta hang up so I can text Dave. The dog's name is actually Trouble is this dog's name and it's it's name fits. So anyway, I gotta go. I hope Tony's not watching. Tony's the animal control. We're getting it in, Tony. They said they chased it off and it ran off barking. So I gotta go tell Dave. All right, you guys. I'm gonna be right back with uh, the deaf bulldog.